They thought they knew all there was to know of war. Until... The War of the Rift. While the Southern King hid, warm in his keep, the Dark Wings cut their bloody trail from frozen north to winter's edge. Alone, the Warden and his small garrison turned their whiskers to the icy wind. At the end of hope, in a last barrage, they wiped Batkind from the land and memory. With no sign of the Darkwing's return, in time, few believed them little more than a fairy's tale. But at Mount Cauldron, time had been all they needed. An old enemy claws free of their icy tomb and hungers for vengeance. But not all is lost. King Rattus brings north a cause for hope. A bastard prince, placed in the paws of the Warden of the Wastes to raise as his own a secret of blood never to be told. Now, fate calls for a hero in a murderous screech, and one young rat will answer. of his father's boots on the stair was how every morning began for Arlo. The booming shout to ready himself was louder still, but such was Lord Eivor's zeal at a new day. Dawn was breaking over winter's edge, and Arlo was yet to miss one. with the horns of the returning hunters, bringing their night's bounty. Arlo's little heart quickened to hear it. The only thrill to be found inside the high walls was a hunter's tales of what lay beyond them. tells himself it's a good life here in Winter's Edge. The bustling of contented rat folk, the crisp mountain air, and without the endless scourge of frogs the southerners suffer. Why should he want for more? There was no time for tales of the hunt today. Lord Eivor was already dividing what was an excellent hall, happy to see his people provided for. Arlo longed only to join the hunt, to see the ratdom or even the lands beyond. His father called it a fool's wish. Arlo's destiny was unshakable, much like the keep that would become his by birthright. Tiki's shop was perhaps Arlo's favorite, as the shopkeeper had wares from far and wide. 
but getting him to part with his curiosities was never easy. Arlo has no memory of his mother, but Hilda's food was a true taste of maternal kindness. With the right ingredients, she would make meals nourishing to body and soul. Chief Mason Leaf was the rat Arlo most admired. As younger brother to Lord Eivor, his carefree uncle never faced the burden of being warden of the wastes. With walls this strong, his duties were light, leaving him plenty of time for his nephew. Crunk was a rat's rat with no interests beyond his forge. If you have the parts, this master crafts rat can make armor and weapons that would see off a sky scorcher bite, or so he claims. Arlo wondered how well they'd do against something that wasn't a myth. had brought unwelcome news. A family of the reviled creatures Ratfolk called backstabbers had moved into the wastes. Eivor told his son to fetch his weapons. His father had no explanation for suddenly taking Arlo on a hunt. It even gave the hunters pause. Arlo had been taught to fight, and better than most. But rarely had he been tested. He was determined to prove himself. The rugged terrain of the outskirts could have taken all day to traverse. But Arlo's trusty grappling hook allowed him to swing between its many crevices.
Marlowe liked the feel of a sharp axe cutting through the vines. The wilds were part of his home, and nothing in them would frighten him. The famous frostberry bushes of the wastes were in full fruit already. Their juice made a healthy tonic, though Lord Avor preferred them fermented. His father was a sturdy rat, built for strength, not speed. So Arlo found it curious that he challenge him to a race. The prospect of the hunt had filled Lord Eivor with a vigor that his son had not seen in years, or at least since breakfast. fights the hardest battles, he told Arlo, and needs the sharpest blade. With that, Eivor gifted Arlo his own sharpening whetstone. Whether these beasts were named for their spines, or for some past unforgivable deed, no rat knew. Either way, Arlo was about to find himself at the pointy ends of this brood. Even young backstabber red attacks were brutal. But a well-timed dodge would see Arlo escape unscathed. This backstabber lived up to its name with its deadly white attack. But Arlo's shield could block the deadly spikes. This young one used vicious yellow attacks. Arlo had to time his parries perfectly. This mother had left her young to fight alone, but the same could not be said of Lord Eivor as he leapt to his son's side. It was Lord Eivor's mighty blade that took her head, but the fight was won together. Arlo basked in his father's pride, almost as warm as at the fire inside Winter's Edge.
triumphant and keen to tell the tale of his son's victories, Lord Eivor set to a night of drinking with the elders. reluctant to return to his bed, wondering how long he must wait to hunt again. The booming footsteps that woke him this time were nothing like those of his father. stood alone, holding back a whole dark wing army, their cruel Count Kazak leading them. His father charged, but the dark wing Count was as fast as he was strong. The winter's crown tumbled to Arlo's feet, now without a head to rest on. There was no time to grieve his father, as from above the Count revealed his greatest weapon, a Sky Scorcher. Not a fairy's tale, but an undead beast whose very breath could level kingdoms. And its eye was trained on Arlo. All that came next was a fog of bloodlust, snapping jaws, and the beating of leathery wings. his father's shouts. Only he wasn't in bed. The warmth was from the fire that had engulfed Winter's Edge, and the shouts were his uncle's. The only other survivor of the Darkwing attack, Leaf was bruised and his hind paws barely steady. He'd seen villagers flee to the outskirts. Arlo knew it was up to him to make them safe. these anywhere. Kronk's smithy hammer and Hilda's chef's knife. Arlo wondered why they would leave them here. Oh! <laughs> 
the attack at Winter's Edge, no hunters had come to check their traps. Arlo thought he might find a use for them. Arlo had found the reason his friends had fled. The taunting shrieks revealed that this was Baron Frostovic, son of the Dark Queen who took his father, and therefore a perfect target for his revenge. Seeing what had been inflicted on Hilda and Krunk, Arlo's need for vengeance was only growing. <laughs> <laughs> 